Okay, the video is starting. Worksheet 14, Thevenin and Norton. Uh, I want to go over the comparison between a Thevenin and a Norton circuit. And I will show you what they both look like. And I went over this in class the other night. And we will demonstrate a Thevenin circuit consists of a voltage source and put a voltage source in there only one and a resistor in series so we'll put a resistance in there only one now connect the dots and then that is what a Thevenin circuit looks like it can be reduced to a voltage source and a series resistance. The voltage source is called V Thevenin or VTH often, and the resistor is called R Thevenin often. And so that is what that looks like. Anytime you ask for a Thevenin or Norton, you're trying to get down to a circuit that is one resistor in series with a voltage source. The Norton um, equivalent circuit is a current there's the current I like my arrows pointing up so I'm going to control R a couple times <clears throat> so there's my current pointing up just one and a resistor that is in parallel. So from a Thevenin standpoint and a Norton standpoint, you're trying to reduce to just one circuit. Either a current source in parallel with a resistor or a voltage source uh, in series with the resistor. So as I draw the lines and I don't know how far to stick that one out but it's okay okay we're centered so usually the current source is designated by I Norton I'm using a capital N it can be a lowercase n because I'll use it in a minute the other way and R Norton or R N so those are the two values now what we want is we want these two circuits to function the same such that you don't know whether you've got a voltage equivalent uh, Thevenin equivalent with a voltage and a series or Norton equivalent with a current and a parallel resistor okay so we want them to act the same so my I Norton is V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin And my V Thevenin is my I Norton times my R Norton. And that will make those circuits equivalent. So it doesn't matter which one you use. And R Thevenin is always equal to R Norton. So those are the fundamental things you got to keep track of in terms of Thevenin and Norton and converting them and I'm gonna make them a little bigger so they show up better on the video and so now if I measure the voltage across the open I get the same I get V Thevenin which is the product of I Norton times R Norton if I short it and measure the current I will get the I Norton current which is the same as V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin so that becomes my I Norton. So just starting out, I'm having you draw a circuit giving you the values and then asking you to convert it to the other. And that's what those equations will do for you. It will allow you to convert one to the other. All righty. 
So your load or the resistor that you're studying or the part you're studying will go across the open. And it doesn't matter which one you use, whether it's the Norton circuit or the Thevenin circuit. Just doesn't matter. Okay. So there's my equations. And there's the first uh, one and two, three and four. I give you two values that are with Evan and I ask you to draw the Norton. So I want you to draw both of them. And for three and four, I give you a Norton values, and I ask you to draw the Thevenin. So I want you to draw both of them there. So there should be four drawings associated with those two problems. Um, so that is what I asked for. Now, superposition. Superposition is used to solve circuit and I will do a superposition problem but I'll use different values and what we discussed in class the other night was superposition must be used if the frequencies are different so if I've got two or more voltage sources and the frequency is different, I must use superposition. And DC is the special case of AC, and its frequency is zero. So DC is really a subset of all the possible problems you can do in DC-AC. It's essentially AC with a frequency of zero. And as we go into AC problems, we'll now have frequencies, and we'll see the frequency effects on uh, what we call reactive components and we'll see that the resistive components actually are pretty predictable and that's why you do DC before you do AC is to sort of sort of get the feel of it sort of get you indoctrinated a little bit into how all, all this works and then and then we just go a little deeper as we go um, so um, I'll probably not use the resistors on the um, worksheet and I won't use the voltage sources on the worksheet I will do a similar process but I will use different values I did use these values in class the other night but as far as as far as a more generic superposition with a DC and an AC source that's what we'll do um, I hope to make two two additional videos. One just doing AC uh, analysis, which would be for 10 and 11, and then not using those values, of course. And then one with different frequencies of AC, which is actually transient. So I'm going to um, go into three videos just to get this covered correctly and it'll be generic so you don't really know anything until somebody give you a similar problem and you can solve it once you, you've got to learn the process to learn not just answers so that's what uh, that's the goal that is the goal. Okay. And I thank you for watching.